Good evening everyone, I am Mr. Ish. We're looking here at a model for radioactive decay video. We're looking here at radioactive decay. You can think of it as synonymous to being radioactive sampling or dating of historical samples, all of that. Utilizing changes in the isotopes, the measurements of isotopes over time to date a sample. That's what we're looking at over here. We have a formula over here which many of you are familiar with, the amount of mass or the sample or the number of atoms at time t of a specific isotope present within your sample is equal to the original times e to the power of minus kt where t is the time in years most likely and k of course represents the rate constant which is usually specific for whatever isotope that it is you're looking at. We have a minus over here which represents the fact that everything with regards to this sample size or radioactive isotopes, everything diminishes with time. It doesn't increase but it diminishes in time. How do you go about deriving this formula? And you know when you're looking at this formula you have to think about the half-life. We'll talk about the half-life and we'll define it when the time comes. When you're looking at something like this, you're thinking about some sample in terms of isotopes that was present at a certain time then over a period of time, right? it has decreased in size to some new amount and there's a certain k a rate constant which usually applies with regards to the isotopes you're looking at. You have to look at this in terms of this initial amount, the sample size, the mass, the number of isotopes with regards to a rate of change. You're doing the rate of change of this over a period of time and it's going to equal to this k and this n value you're looking here and you have to apply a minus sign because we're looking here at the fact that things will diminish over time as this reaction proceeds things will diminish in terms of the isotopes or the number of atoms over time you can flip the dt and the n and you can make everything like this as you see over here you have a k and then a dt if you want to be a little extra cautious you can take the minus on the other side you're looking at the rate and change of this n is equal to minus k dt and now here you have a rate of change but you want to apply an integral over it because we're dealing with changes over time. With regards to the time you have a zero and a t in terms of initial time and the time at time t of this experiment or this measurement and here you're looking at some original amount and here you're looking at some amount at certain time after a amount or period of time has elapsed. So nt and n or those serve as your upper and lower limits. When you integrate something like this you're looking at something which is really like this, a 1 over x, you know when you integrate that in terms of the antiderivative, the natural log will come into play. When you integrate this, you'll have a natural log come in, natural log n, and you know you're looking at nt and then no. Here, with regards to this dt, the hidden antiderivative will come, which is time t, right? t, we have a minus kt, you can do upper and lower limit input into your antiderivative you'll have natural log nt and then here you'll have natural log n or remember it's always the difference of your upper and your lower limit here it's going to equal to a minus kt you can take this on the other side natural log this uh, the amount the size or the number of atoms at time t is equal to natural log no minus kt this here is a good linear equation of this entire radioactive process. This is the way you can express this equation in a linear format. If you were to graph it, you know you're looking at something like y equals, here's your y-intercept and here's your rate mx, right? You're looking at y is equal to b minus mx. The fact that you have a negative slope here indicates you're looking at something which will look like that. You know you'll have your n values here with regards to the number of atoms or the size or the mass of the sample. Here you'll have your time. And this right here is your y-intercept, which will be natural log NO. And you know, your equation is represented like this in terms of the linear format. But we want to look at derivation of this logarithmic exponential equation, and we have to do that. So let's do it. When you're looking at something like this right here, you can focus in onto this equation right here and look at this difference of natural logs as a quotient under a single natural log. And you see it coming into play like this. This is just the properties of logs coming into play. If this is equal to minus kt, then you can take the natural log on the other side and it becomes an exponential. You have e to the minus kt. Then you can take the no on to the other side. The amount of size of the sample at time t is equal to no, the original amount or the original number of atoms times e to the minus kt. And the equation has been derived. That right there represents the equation of radioactive decay or radioactive sampling, which is exactly what you see right over here. Now, from here, it's important to determine half-life and let's talk about it, half-life. And just don't forget, this right here represents an exponential equation having logarithmic features. 
a graph of that would be very similar to you looking at e to the minus x. It would look something like this, but the fact that we're looking here at a real life example, we're not gonna have negative time, so you're not looking at anything here in terms of a negative quadrant of x axis values or your time values, and you can really spruce up this graph and make it look a little more realistic by something like that. Again, this right here represents n, this here represents time, and this here represents the original amount of samples, right? The original amount, it'll be right here, n-o. And what we'll represent here will be n-t. After a certain amount of time has elapsed, you can determine what your amount of the sample or the mass of the sample or, or the isotopes that exist at a certain amount after a time has elapsed. Anyhow, let's look at this half-life. What is half-life? Half-life is the amount of time needed for your sample to decrease in terms of number of atoms or in terms of its mass by half. The number of years it takes or the amount of time it takes for your original to be halved. And you know with regards to half-life, the amount of sample at time t will always be equal to half of your original, right? Because that's the definition of half-life. If you're looking at here at this, you can very well substitute it for this. You have NO over 2 is equal to NO e to the minus kT. You can take this NO to the other side, the amount at time 0, NO over 2, NO. I'm saying NO, but it's really not O, it's a subscript O, but we'll say it like that. And you know you have these cancel out. You have 1 over 2 is equal to e to the minus kT. We can finish this equation derivation right over here by me creating some space for you. You can take the e on the other side, you have a minus kt is equal to natural log 1 over 2. You can open this up in terms of a difference of natural logs. Natural log 1 minus natural log 2 is equal to minus kt. Natural log 1 is a 0, right? You have a minus natural log 2 is equal to minus kt. You can just get rid of the minuses. You have natural log 2 is equal to kt and here t which will represent half-life is equal to natural log 2 over k. This right here represents the equation of half-life and we can very well put it right over here. Half-life is equal to natural log 2 over k. A very useful equation that you should know. Anyhow, when you're looking here at this formula right here, this represents time elapsed or time over a period of years. This does not represent half-life but you can modify it by means of this definition right over here in which case then this equation, same equation, the t begins to adopt the half-life definition of t and all of these t's here then represent half-life but in the original equation this does not represent half-life but after you adopt this definition then it does represent the half-life and this is exactly what you're looking at you can also think of it as 0.693 over k anyhow you have two variables here and one constant. The variable is half-life and k. If you if you know one, you can calculate the other. Either you could have an application where you know this and you have to calculate that, or you know this and you have to calculate this. The only reason why I'm calling this a variable, though it's really called a rate constant, it's a variable because you could be having to calculate this first in terms of your constant for whatever application it is that you are looking at. In that regard, then it serves as a variable, but in the true sense of the word, it's not a variable. It's still a rate constant. But unless you don't know it and you only know these two items, then with regards to that mathematical operation, it does serve as a variable. All right, I promise for you here a very good, interesting question. A sample has 3.125% of the normal carbon-14 content than that of its environment. If you have a specific sample that you have discovered and you've unearthed it and you're comparing it to the natural surroundings, it has a carbon-14 content which is 3.125% of everything else. Everything else has a normal content. This has 3.125% of that. What is carbon-14? It's a naturally occurring isotope of carbon which is very well utilized in radioactive decay calculations and radioactive sampling. How old is this sample? The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. How do you go about doing this? Well, we know the equation is this. We're trying to determine how old it is, so we're determining time. We know what the NT is. We know what an NO is because we can intuitively determine NO. What we don't know is what the K is. We can determine the value over here if we have two unknown variables. We have to determine what K is. You can very well determine K from this equation right over here because we have the half-life here. Remember, this half-life here is not representative of this right here. For this specific question, T is representing the total time. This half-life is coming from right over here. If you know natural log 2 over K is equal to T half, then we know that K is equal to natural log 2 over 
the t half right the half life which is equal to natural log 2 over 5730 so you'll need a scientific calculator over here because we'll need the specific k value do natural log 2 divided by 5730 we get a value here 1.2096 and let's save it 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4 and it's a rate constant all right now we know the rate constant we know this we know that how do we know what no is because if something contains 3.125% of the normal carbon-14 content, everything around it must be 100%. So 3.125%, you don't even have to convert this into percentage, is equal to 100. Because a normal sample would have 100, a full amount. What you have is a very reduced or diminished amount. That's your amount at time t, that's your amount originally is equal to E times minus K, which right here, minus 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4 T. All you have to do is the algebra over here. All right, so let's do this. We take the 100 on the other side, we'll get a 0 0.03125. And then you take the E on the other side, you'll get a natural log of this. The natural log of this will generate a negative answer. And then you have minus 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4 T. To solve for this t, all you gotta do is just take this on the other side and divide it by the value here. This will generate a negative, which will cancel with that, and we'll easily get our answer. Our answer over here will be 28,652 28, years. So the sample that you found, which has this much percent remaining of carbon-14, is 28,652 years old. All right, let's look at this question. A sample which is 100 milligrams we have determined it and we weighed it, we found it, it was 100 milligrams. It has been determined to be 100,000 years old. What was its original mass? And we're here again utilizing carbon-14 dating and we will again start with right here. Natural log 2 divided by what is the half-life for this carbon-14? We can write it out and it's always available to us by means of a table 5730 years. Natural log 2 divided by 5730 years will give us our k value over here based on this equation and we should have this because we'll need it. And the value here is 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4. Now what we have is an nt which is a 100. What we need to do is find no, the original amount, but we have everything else. We have e to the power of minus 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4 times over here a 100,000 years which is the time. Remember, just don't confuse this for half-life because it's different, all right? The equation forms are a little different. This is representing the time of this experiment or the time elapsed. This here is specifically for half-life. All you have to do is compute this. You can very well calculate this, take it on the other side and divide it from 100 and you'll get your answer and NO, your original sample, where we'll determine it and we'll paste the value for you over here. When I do this part right over here, I'm getting a 5.58 times 10 to the minus 6. When I take it to the other side, you'll divide this from 100. You'll divide that and you'll get a good answer here. I will have to put this in scientific notation as a pretty large number, 1.79. 1.79 times 10 to the 7 milligrams. So you can see after 100,000 years, it has dropped quite a bit in terms of its mass. All of that mass has been lost in the form of isotopes that were generated and they left the sample and they went into the environment. So this answer here should be right. You can see how this procedure developed. You have to calculate all of this and then you just take it on the other side and it divides. Here you're not going to generate any negative number just because you have this because you'll really be looking at e to the power of minus x over here and then you'll be looking at 1 over e to the x. You'll get a large decimal answer in terms of something very close to zero when it do, goes to the other side you're dividing a large number by something very small and it raises the value and hence we have such a large value over here all right this right here represents our last question and it is a good question slightly tricky but it isn't because you can easily logically answer this without calculations we can do this in one of two ways the easy logical way and then we can do it this harder way i will show it to you in both ways a 500 gram sample now measures at 125 grams. How many half-lives have elapsed? We are again talking here solely about carbon-14. If you started here, this right here is a logical way. If you started here for 500, and we're talking about half-life, if you remember what the definition of half-life is, the amount of time needed for the original sample to be reduced in terms of half of its original. 500 divided by 2 after the first half-life, it would be 250 grams after another half-life the second half-life will be 125 grams and your answer would be done 
how many half lives have elapsed two half lives have elapsed and the answer here would be two but we can do this the more difficult way and might as well just for educational purposes and the difficult way would actually require you again to have determined this k you would have done natural log 2 divided by half life 5730 years and you would have gotten that value then you would plug in everything over here and i'll show you how this would play out you know your final mass or number of atoms is 125 you know your original was 500 and you know e is easy here and you know minus K, which is 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4. Here you're still calculating for the total time that has elapsed. Remember, this is not half life. If you were to easily do this calculation, you do 125 divided by 500, you get a 0.25, and then you take the E on the other side, you'll get natural log of 0.25, and then from here you divide everything here, the K value minus 1.2096 times 10 to the minus 4, all of this would equal to T. If you did this calculation right here, where you're just algebraically solving for T, you'll get this value and I'll post it for you. You'll get a value here of 11460.7 years. This 0.7 years is meaningless because we can just look at the whole number part. If you take this 11,460 years and you divide it by the half-life 5730, you can do it and you can get a good value here. I get like a 2.00 and then there's fractional numbers, still two, two half-lives over here. Your answer you're getting here is a whole number which represents two half-lives. And that right there is your answer doing it the hard way. This original way is the intuitive or the logical way. You can always do things that way. There's nothing wrong with doing it because we're talking about half lives. It's a very intuitive and logical concept. Or if you want, you can do it this way and for sure know that your answer is right. Both ways have been demonstrated for you. And this question has been completed. Two half lives elapsed for the sample to go from 500 to 125. And your answer is done. And this video is done. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.